Welcome. So we have here a solid disk of radius B. We know it's charge density eta, and we want to find the electric potential a distance A away from the center. So one way we can do this is if we know the electric field, we can take a path integral. But this is another approach, is that we can use superposition like we did in electric fields. So we can think, what do we want to make this disk out of? So one thing we can make it out of would be a ring. And then we can make it out of another ring. And if we add up all of these individual rings, we get a disk. So in our organized step, what we can do is we can write the electric potential of a ring and then just add up the electric potential of these rings, just like we added up the electric fields of uh, these rings. So we have the dV of a ring is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dQ over the square root of z squared plus r squared. Don't have to worry about direction, right? Everything's coming up us. So then in our organized step, right, we want to then define everything that we need. So our z is a. Our capital R is a variable. It's not b. Let's talk about it, right? This ring has some sort of radius for this ring. This ring has a different radius. So as we're summing up all these individual rings, each ring has its own different radius, r. So as we then do that, we have r as a variable. For dq, we know for eta that eta is equal to dq over dA. So then we can say that our dq is eta dA. We just have to find what dA is. Well, if I was to take this ring, splice it, and then stretch it out, so I've got then this is my ring going from here to here, then the inner radius of this is just the circumference, 2 pi r. And if I make this sufficiently thin, then the outer radius will be so close to 2 pi r that I can call it a rectangle and say it's also 2 pi r. In order for this to be thin enough, then I need this thickness to be very, very small. And we can see if I'm going from the inner to the outer, I am actually changing in r, so it would be dr. So then I can write that my eta, or sorry, my dq is eta 2 pi r dr, because I have that my dA is 2 pi r times dr. So let's go back to this dV ring, write out everything that we have. So we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We write our dq, eta, 2 pi r dr. And we write our z squared plus r squared, which is going to be a squared plus r squared. So we can do a tiny bit of canceling just to make things a little bit easier. Pi and pi go away. The 2 and the 4 turns into a 2. And then as I go through this, I then have one last thing to do before solving is now I've got to figure out my limits of integration. So my r was my variable. I need to figure out what the smallest r is, what the largest r is. The smallest r would be a ring with radius 0, and the largest would be a ring with radius b. And then I have eta over 2 epsilon naught, which I, of course, can pull out of the integral. And then what's left is r dr over square root of a squared plus r squared. And so what I could do is I could do a u substitution where I say u is equal to a squared plus r squared. du would then be 2r dr, and then start solving that way. Or I can just have Wolfram alpha or whatever else compute the integral for me. So in that case, either case, I would get eta over 2 epsilon naught. And then I get the square root of a squared plus r squared evaluated from 0 to b. So my v is then going to be eta over 2 epsilon naught. And then evaluating this, I would get a squared plus b squared minus a squared plus 0. a squared, well, so we'll do square root of a squared. And then square root of a squared is just a. So my electric potential of a disk 
is eta over 2 epsilon naught a squared plus b squared minus a. So adding together electric potentials through superposition is just as easy, in fact, easier than what we did for electric fields. So we won't spend much time on it, but it'll be a good redemption round for those of us who didn't feel we got the grade that we wanted with electric fields.